Hi, I'm Brian Franco, founder and managing partner of Meritage Partners. For the last 20 years, I've been involved with public companies, private equity, venture capital, family offices, and angel investors to provide you, your business, and your company with the tools needed to successfully navigate the future. Welcome to M&A Update. Hi, welcome to another episode of M&A Updates. I'm Brian Franco, founder and managing partner of Meritage Partners. I'm joined here by Steve Carroll, who I've had the opportunity to work with on a recent transaction. Steve, welcome uh, uh, being on this this episode with us. Absolutely. Thanks yeah. for inviting me today, Brian. Of course, of course. So you are the CEO of Calso Industries. Uh, we met along um, a the path, recent pathway on a project we called Project Pool. Mm -hmm. And in that particular project, uh, we, we I believe we reached out to you, or maybe one of your, your, your business partners um, via email. Um, and we introduced the opportunity uh, of Project Pool. And, um, you know, t tell us why that was a good fit for you guys and, and how you saw that opportunity as a as a perfect or a fantastic add-on to your existing platform yeah thanks for that brian so so kelso industries is a now leading national mechanical provider and when we think of mechanical it's hvac it's plumbing it's automation and controls uh, a lot of equipment um, heavy equipment and oftentimes that equipment gets to a point where it if, if you install new equipment oftentimes that equipment reaches a, a lifespan and it needs to be replaced and so one of the key elements to Kelso industries is being able to service building owners and facilities owners with that upgrade and that ability to improve their HVAC systems that might be old. Mm -hmm. And so Project Pool is a key part of our strategy that we want to be able to have in our in our service portfolio. So we're very excited to mm -hmm. have added that in. And we if I could get a hundred of them, I would do it. <laughs> well, that's the goal, right? And so I imagine, you know, us as Meritage Partners, as advisors in, in the space, um, we know enough to be dangerous. You know a lot more than we do. But what I've learned over the years is that depending on where that that facility is located, whether it's on the coast or whether it's in the central states or wherever it may be, I mean, the lifespan of that equipment, it, it can, can vary, right? I mean, mm -hmm. if you have a a hospitality uh, project or hotel, let's say along the coast in of California, Washington, Hawaii, wherever it may be. Um, cause, and I say those geographies cause that's where project pool was, is, is servicing. But I imagine that those systems need more maintenance than those in a drier environment. Is that? Is yeah. That fair? Yeah, absolutely. There's different components that, that need maintenance and change out and repair work when you're in a high humidity environment. Um, in 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 retrospect to that, in some parts of the country that are high heat and humidity, it it just wreaks havoc on it. So you know, California being a place where there's a decent amount of humidity and heat on a regular basis, it it does cause that building owner to spend more time and more energy maintaining their cool, clean, comfortable air for their, their clients and their customers. And it's an essential service. You're not going to be in that building if their HVAC systems are not working properly. You're just not going to be in there. You're, you're going to be gone somewhere else because it'll be stuffy and hot. So it's an essential service and that's part of our strategy. And I'm, I'm excited that Project Pool is able to join us and continue our uh, critical and essential service offerings. That, that winning strategy obviously works for your platform. It works for the customers that you've been servicing historically. And, and you know, we both discovered that Project Pool, you know, primarily focused on, you know, uh, retrofit type work, right? Mm -hmm. um, they were not, uh, so focused on the maintenance portion of this and the maintenance portion of this to your point is is crucial to to any facility owner 
And, um, you know, I, I can tell you from the, the experience working together and the interactions with the client is that the, the growth opportunity, um, isn't, is there and was there, but they, they weren't as experienced as you are to go out and, and really provide that, you know, maintenance service. And so if, if I remember correctly, part of the strategy going forward is to bring those skill sets and those service disciplines into that, that, that acquisition of project pool, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's part of the, the life cycle of, of being a mechanical provider, you're installing new equipment, you're remodeling spaces and putting in um, and changing out equipment, you're servicing the equipment, you're maintaining the equipment, and we seek to provide all of those solutions and services to facilities owners and uh, property managers, building owners all across the country. Mm -hmm. So, um, piece by piece in some instances we we pick up part of that puzzle and we pick up another piece and and together we're able to do more and that that's what project pools been able to do for us is come in and provide one of those key pieces and we will over time be able to offer more services to those cu customers and um even just today we were interacting with them on an opportunity in Arizona where they have a client and we have some resources and we're going to be able to take care of that client in Arizona because we have more resources together. So we're we're excited for a lot more of those opportunities to to come to pass as well. And this is why it was an easy yes from from the client's perspective in working with you because they they saw and they subscribed to the concept of better together and and here we are, you know, we closed the transaction, you guys are working together and and here's an opportunity a great example of those opportunities that everyone expected to to surface and 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 here we are not even a a month into this and it's happening so yeah it's exciting yeah, yeah i think we're i think we are definitely achieving that one plus one equal three yes. scenario and we'll continue to do that love it love it so um you know we talked about project pool and and the geography that they they focus and service in and also, you know, their service disciplines, um, just, you know, g generally, uh, Calso industries, wh where are you servicing today? And, and, and you, you did mention you are now one, one of the nation's leading, uh, mechanical groups. Is that right? We're, we're on a short list for sure. Um, we're, we're over 700 employees all across the United States. We're in California. Idaho, Utah, Arizona. We operate in some other states, but that's where we have some headquarters on the West Coast. And now we're on the East Coast as well in Pennsylvania, Georgia, and Florida. And uh, we're, we're, we're coast to coast in that manner. We're, we're definitely looking to continue to expand. We're looking for great partners just like Project Pool to come join our, our family of companies, continue to service your customer base, continue to provide an income for your team, develop some 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 growth strategies together and and or a succession plan together. Everyone eventually wants to have a way to exit or monetize their business to some way and we are excited and appreciate the value that we bring in that way to owners. So um, we've done that eight times. We've made eight acquisitions in uh, roughly two years. In fact, uh, the end of this month will mark the two-year mark for having started Kelso Industries and got on this journey. But uh, we see a very much, very much bright future ahead. There's a lot more work to be done. I, I'd love to be in every state. I'd love to be in every major city, and I'd love to be able to provide a full mechanical solution to every building owner in those cities, whether it's new install, remodel, retrofit, service, or maintenance from an HVAC and a plumbing standpoint. So that's it's a it's a big vision. It's crazy, but it's it's something we're going to be able to do with great partners and great groups joining us at Kelso. Absolutely, yeah, and and. 
in working together, we were we were witnesses of that. And and um, you know, you just walk through and talk through, you know, what you're looking for, wh- wh- ge- geographically where, um, and the fact that you scaled from you know, let's say zero to s- over 700 employees in two years with eight acquisitions. I mean, that's I applaud you for that because that's absolutely impressive. It it's, it took hard work and commitment, and it's that same hard work and commitment that. I, I believe on, on Project Pool that our clients saw in you and, and again, made it much easier for them to gravitate to to uh, a, a buyer profile like you, um, you know, but what are some of the, um, you know, what what are some of those things that you see in, in other potential opportunities that you look at, right? What, what's, what's, because you have to imagine, you know, there, there's going to be some that are tuning in that they own HVAC companies. They own mechanical companies. Um, what are what are some of those pitfalls that that they could start working on, and, and and how do they how do they come best dressed when they're ready to meet you and sit down? Yeah. With, what 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 advice do you have for them? Hundred percent appreciate the question. So, with our bottle, we're very focused on a partnership and. That what that means is I'm not bringing a ton of corporate overhead to make any changes. And I'm, I'm really looking for a business that has all the parts and pieces that can that can be a standalone for all intents and purposes. The brand can stay intact. The employees are still proud to wear their their hats and their gear from the companies that they've been a part of for all those years. Um, but also know that they're a part of a little bit bigger company, a little bit more, um, a little bit more growth. Uh, hopefully, over time, we'll be able to bring more resources to that company and help them achieve their growth goals. Yeah, that yeah. that that is kind of the first part of my criteria when I look for a company to to join us. Um, I'd say a really big part of that also is is a great culture, a culture where the employees have have uh, bonded to their business. Um, they love servicing their customers. There's uh, there's a great camaraderie amongst the team and the associates and the business. And it's it's work, but they like coming to work and they like having that relationship with the team. Uh, the owner, the owner may have a part in the business, uh, but if the owner is doing everything, it's a little harder for me because especially if the owner is trying to retire, um, it's, I, I want a business where I can partner with the team, support them. If the owner is leaving, the owner's been handing off the responsibilities be it finance, be it sales, estimating operations, that there's a team behind the owner that does all the work. Mm -hmm. And as the owner either steps up to a greater management responsibility as a partner inside of Kelso, or the owner looks for a way to, you know, slow down and eventually retire, that's great. But I need that team behind the owner fully bought in, fully fully excited every day for taking more responsibility and or continuing to manage the business so that the owner isn't the the main component any longer in that business. Yeah, we're, we're big ambassadors of, of that messaging. And, and that is, you know, it, 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 the common denominator, of what you described is transferability, right? And, you know, it's clear to me that you look at opportunities based on culture, based on the people because you know this is not just a, a financial transaction for you you're building a legacy right in, in, in these companies and to that point you know you are not so focused on rebranding these companies that you acquire right where where it has to be my name it has to be my name on the building no i mean you're saying let's do what's best for the culture of the people and give them the power and the and tools and, and equip them with the ability to service the customer because the, the, you know, the, the, in this industry, and you're in a B two B service, right? You're, you're going to win by by uh, ultimately servicing that customer and that client. But you can't do that with the wrong culture and the wrong people and the wrong systems. 
So in the spirit and in the theme of transferability, you know, we, we talk about this a lot with business owners. And, you know, when you talk about the, the ability to have the owner transition into retirement, which let's face it, you know, for the first time in human history, we are, we are facing the largest wealth transfer, right? But the biggest problem that we see as advisors is that this wealth transfer, you know, is a big opportunity, but there's a bigger problem and that all falls and lies into the, the transition planning or the exit planning. And, and the reality is a lot of business owners have not taken the time to, you know, I, I call it work themselves out of a job. Right. Right. Because the, 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 more, the, the more they can do that and, and it, it makes it much more of a transferable business so that when you step into the, into the picture and have these conversations and, 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 and show them what you have to offer, you know, it, it, it helps their valuation it helps the deal terms and it helps the it really, uh, it, it allows you as an operator and investor the the confidence the security and the perception of risk is greatly reduced when when the owner has worked themselves out of a job and so 100%. yeah and what what i what i experienced working with you is that you know th there are some levels of that that will always be uh, in the making and and on the agenda um but what i what i experienced was you and your team, you know, really empower those owners and, and give them a pathway to that retirement, right? Because yes, you know, there, there are circumstances where, you know, someone has to sell the business on Monday and, and, and due to health reasons, they have to be out by Friday, right? But um, that, that makes for a risky opportunity, you know, for anyone, right? Not just you, but anyone acquiring that business. Right. So, but, you know, you, what I, again, what I saw on the point that I'm getting at is that you were a coach to them. You were, you know, drawing the, 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 the turn by turn, you know, directions and instructions to help them get to that place and point of retirement. And I appreciate that in you. And I, and, and I, I, I'm looking forward to working on the next opportunity with you because you have a clear understanding of that and you have the ability to articulate that that same need, not only from, from the, the business's perspective, but also from you is, you know, acquiring that business. Um, anything else you would say to speak to that? And yeah, I think that, thank you for those comments, Brian. I think in addition to those thoughts, the business, the business is worth more if the owner is not running the business and there's a team there. Um, not only is it worth more to some degree, it's able to be sold. In, in some cases, if the owner is doing too much, there may not even be a buyer for that business because if the owner's doing too much and the new buyer has to come into a job, then that business is, is significantly worth less and for somebody like me, I, I can't even buy that business because I, I have I have now eight companies and we're expanding and we have multiple offices all over now. And um, I, I only have so many hours in the day where I can actually go into have conversations with my partners and presidents and division managers of our companies. So I need I need that business to be able to stand on its own two feet. And I need the, the management team compensated in a way where they're excited about taking on that responsibility before I even step in there. But what that does is it makes it not only more valuable to me, but it's more valuable to everybody else. So should they get an opportunity to present the business in that way, I'm going to be excited about it. But there's also going to be other buyers that are excited about it. And that makes your business worth to some degree, a little bit more money. Yeah. It's transferable. It's scalable. It's manageable. It's a, it's an investable asset at that, at that moment. Absolutely. And, and, and to sum up what you said, you're not looking to buy a job. You're looking to buy a business, right? To, to hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We see that all the time. In fact, uh, you know, we, we spend time on, on exit planning with clients as well, um, addressing these very things. Right. And so you are, where you sit as a as a strategic acquirer in the mechanical and HVAC space, 
you know, you are saying exactly what, what we, we, we teach clients and educate clients in that exit planning process. So if someone is interested in selling and, you know, they've had the opportunity to, to watch this video and to learn more about you and who Steve is and, and, and what makes him tick and what gets them excited. Um, you know, uh, what, what, uh, is, is there, is there going, or you know, they might even not even be going down that path, right? That you may be provoking thought in them right now. Sure. Um, you've given a lot of good advice, but, um, you know, if anyone is interested in, in speaking with Steve, you know, feel free to reach out to us and, um, uh, you know, we'll make sure we, we could connect you both, um, because th there is a tremendous amount of opportunity for, for both parties. And the reality is, you know, Steve and I had an opportunity to work on another similar opportunity in a different region. Um, but, you know, Steve, if you remember this project, uh, Project Gas Lamp, I mean, the husband and wife were just not in a position where they could transfer their business. And and I'll give you an update there. They they are working with our team right now on an exit plan to, to help um, uh, increase the 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 uh the perspective of transferability good ultimately, That's great. yeah yeah because because ultimately to your point is you know valuation goes up when 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 the perception of risk goes down and the perception of risk goes down when you see a clear path for transferability of that business right right and and one thing else to add brian we're focused on industrial and commercial and that business model has a lot to do with relationships. It's often that I find the owner carries a lot of those relationships. It might be relationships with the employees, could be with the customers, it could be with the vendors. Those things, I can't lose any of those relationships without seeing an impact on my on my investment and my PL. So partnerships important so that I can maintain those three. But even better if the relationships are distributed throughout the company and the owner is more silent in nature because the relationships are shared. I get it. A lot of owners want to stay on those relationships and own the customers and own the key vendors. But again, if you want to sell your business and if you want to retire, someone has to take that on. So, hey, I can work with you in that manner. I just need you to roll and continue to run the business for another three to five years. But if you want to have an exit sooner, allow your team to build those relationships, empower them give them the tools, give them the, the opportunities to build those relationships for the sake of the business, compensate them fairly so they're excited about it and the increased effort and the increased responsibility. That's a bit, that's a business we can build upon. Yeah, that is fantastic advice. And, and, and uh, I think that when, when that's received and that's put into action, Ultimately, that benefits, you know, uh, again, the transaction value to everybody. So if, if, if you do have interest in pursuing an opportunity with Steve or looking at the first steps of exit planning, you know, feel free to reach out to us. We'll put everyone in, in contact with one another and um, we'll, we'll put the process forward from there. Um, Steve, uh, anything you could say in terms of your, your working relationship with Meritage and in terms of the experience you had working with our team and yeah uh, yeah from all, introduction to due diligence all the way to closing you know absolutely absolutely meritage was professional all along the way i appreciated all of our conversations all the way from the beginning all the way to the end i appreciated that that brian and and the team was always available I don't think there was ever a time where I tried to reach you guys and I couldn't get a hold of you. So your accessibility was very, you know, timely and valuable through the process. Your professionalism in uh, working through issues. Um, selling a business is hard, but I very much appreciated having you guys as partners in the process. And 
helping solve problems, whether that was something we could solve or we needed to bring another party in, in, in you know, a lawyer, an accountant, or how, there's people involved in the process and you, you involved the right people through the process so that we could get to a conclusion and a closing. So um, definitely look forward to further opportunities to work with Meritage and uh, Brian and the whole team. Um, I, I'm excited for, for the next opportunity and the next deal together. Likewise, Steve, th thank you for that. We really, really appreciate it. And, and, you know, we enjoyed working with you as well and your team. Uh, you know, the, 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 even the third parties that you brought to the table, you really, you really assembled a team and a culture in which everyone is there to, to focus on the task at hand, uh, in, in a polite way, in a professional way, and really just remembering, you know, these are, yes, these are, these are transactions, but they involve humans. And you guys were always very mindful of that, uh, and ex especially the human emotion. And, uh, because these transactions, you know, they can be very, uh, intense, right. From, from that standpoint. Definitely. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. the, I get it. The owner is, has built this thing. They've cared for it. They've loved it. It's, it's basically their baby. Right. And mm -hmm. You're not just going to give your baby away and, you know, let somebody take it and run off with it. You're going to nurture it and you're going to care for it. You're going to find a good home for your baby. So we're, we're a hundred percent aware and, and appreciate the, the process that goes into <laughs> taking someone's baby and nurturing it and giving it a good home. Um, and there sometimes are emotions in that, right? It's your baby. So we we see the 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 place in the in the economy where we fit and we're we're you know understanding and, and have the care to to always want to work through those processes and emotions. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. Well, Steve, thank you for spending the time with me today and 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 going through you know this recent transaction and and and, and the history of working together here on this. Looking forward to staying in contact and uh connecting with you you got to tell me when you reach a thousand employees um <laughs> I, I know that's in your in your optics so it's gonna yeah. happen soon brian it's gonna happen very soon i, I only got a few more that i'm gonna i'm gonna be bringing in and we'll be there so all right be a great one. So. Yeah, well, you definitely keep me in the loop and uh again you know thank you everyone for tuning in and and, and watching this segment of MA updates again if you have any interest in speaking with steve or our meritage partners please reach out to us and we'll put everyone in contact